Good morning from Yummy B TV. Wishing you all well. Sending plenty of love your way as usual now. This case that I'm giving my opinion on, on and commenting on. Um, different side of, I suppose, to the coin that we often talk about. That it's often men that are murdering um, young ladies or vulnerable targets. And that kind of stuff. But sometimes um, the reality is it happens... On the other side as well, where ladies um, murder their so-called loved ones for one reason or another. So I do my best to break down what many of you have asked me to do this morning. Now, the case is the tragic murder of Casey Anderson, right? A young boy. Definitely, definitely a happy-go-lucky boy. At the hands of a lady called Natalie Bennett. Right, so at the time of death for this tragic case, she would have been 47. He was one week away from celebrating his 25th birthday, which would have fallen on April the 8th. Draws parallels my sister's birthdays on April the 8th. Now, it means they were together around about five years, described as a volatile relationship, but he would have been 20, what, 20, 20 at the time, and she would have been 42. Um, family members to Casey Anderson were very alarmed by this relationship, probably because of the history in Liverpool surrounding Natalie Bennett's past and behaviours from past and that kind of stuff. And him being a happy-go-lucky young man wasn't really too into drink and drugs at the time that he met miss bennett so he's taken in probably loved her and by you know my opinion you know i'll stand up and be counted on this but it feels that you know by way of manipulation that she sounds like she had the upper hand of this relationship that he may have been so besotted with her and taken in by her um that you know he was at her beck and call and probably going to do exactly what she wanted him to do. So the build-up to this tragic murder was that probably a few weeks before, if my memory serves me, serves me correctly, that there'd already been an attack on him of some kind. And during those years, there was often little skirmishes and bits of violence um, going on during this relationship. Now, well, it's my opinion and, you know, human behaviour and that kind of stuff, with him being that happy-go-lucky, lovely boy who everybody loved, with a big family of all kind of siblings as well, right? It's been said that even if he had his last fiver, five pound note, he would give all those around him, one pound each, that kind of stuff. And we know that he used to sing that song every day, um, um, chairman of the board, um, that song, very, very, um, I, I hear they played it at his funeral as well. Um, it boils down to something like this, the, where the screams are coming from um, with her behaviour that strikingly reminds me of the Tracy Andrews case all those years ago, where she killed her boyfriend on a lay-by and told, him, told the whole world on TV that it was at the hands of of somebody else. Now, look, this case goes to court. All the family members are sitting in the courtroom, right? And let's not forget, at his bedside while he was passing away or was already dead, um, 10 to 15, 20 family members slept at his bedside. Um, too much to take in um, that he had passed and they slept there all night, crying their eyes out. Little girls, little sisters, little brothers, aunties. His last port of call really was um, the last person speaking to him as he was gurgling and having his last breath was his auntie. So we know that she will never, ever get over that. His father, who has never been the same ever since someone sees him in the shop the other day and he's shaking and breaking down. And again, another victim um, who is going to suffer for the rest of his life and more than likely will ne never get over it as well. Also, we point to the features that remind me of Tracy Andrews is that 
when the attack is taking place, more stab wounds um, to the head, um, a couple of fatal ones, one to the heart. Um, someone hears quite clearly that she's calling him a rat as this um, attack is taking place as well. Let's not forget that, right? So what I say is um, she goes to court. She pleads not guilty. <laughs> the counsel on her behalf say PTSD and traumatic life and it's fueled by drugs and drink, etc., etc. Uh, but yet you seem to be in full control of what you're doing. My always, my belief is always this. If you can tell lies and make up ways of manipulating the serious, serious, the, probably the most serious crime that you could ever do and still come out with it. I found him like that. Um, and I've just come out to help, but only the difference was the doorbell camera picks you up um, doing it. But you want to plead not guilty because diminished PTSD, PTSD, a volatile relationship fueled by drugs and blah, blah, blah. You're still skilled enough to try and find a way out. Very cold and calculating, um, right to the bitter end. And she's in court, she gets found guilty. The judge sees right through it. She writes a letter to the judge saying she's so remorseful and she can't get over it and blah, 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 blah. And she gets 18 years. So she has to serve 18 years before any chance of being released. Now, my personal opinion is if I was the family, I would be, I would be appealing that because of the cold, calculating nature in which the murder was executed. You know, I speak up quite freely for the ladies on my channel uh, when, you know, men do harrowing things to them in heats of the moment or for other reasons um, that we talk about on Yami B TV as well. This is not a crime of passion. This is a crime of somebody. It's got to be said. It's got to be said. And I'm not a clinical psychologist, but if you read between the lines, it would be that Miss Bennett probably suffered throughout all her life through various relationships and, you know, harrowing experiences that have happened to her, many other of us as well, that the way that he's, Casey Anderson's character is, um, was too much for her. That he was somebody that was so well loved. Yeah, the little girl walking on from school, his little sister crying her eyes out, asking when will I see him? What was, these are the things that um, victims of these crimes have to go through um, day in and day out. There's no recovery for some. We know about the Bulger case and father and what they've had to go through for a lifetime, something as harrowing, um, some say not on par with this, but definitely it is on par with this uh, because so many people have been affected by one incident. We find that six, seven, eight, nine, ten family members are basically never, ever going to recover. So sometimes, like I always say, sometimes it's not one murder, is it? It's more likely seven, eight, nine, ten murders. Yeah? So I say to you, I'm not telling you to appeal and try and... But I would do that. I would do that. I don't think 18 years is suitable for such crimes because of the belief... Like Tracy Andrews lied in front of the cameras. It was somebody else. And some, there's been many that have stood before cameras who are actually the murderers who have said, which again, psychopathic traits. It does definitely show that, I'm afraid. Because if you can't find it in your heart during those 99 calls, when those incidents are taking place and you can't say that it was you that done it, for this reason and that reason, and the wounds, she had a bump on her eye and something like that. More sounds to me like defensive wounds where he was um, trying to protect himself. You see what I mean? So how do you get out? How do you get out of that if you can find the answers in such critical, critical moments during murders? You are definitely manipulative and a psychopath by all intents and purposes because you're still trying to squirm out of the actions that you've just done. Don't believe it, don't believe it. And then on top of that, when you get found guilty and get your 18 years, you put your thumbs up to your family in the courtroom, more disrespect to the family, families to the victims who can't get over it. So, you know, this is my take on, on such things and that, but what the, the, <laughs> the human behavior, right? 
when you've done things, we know when we used to deny crimes and robberies and burglaries, it wasn't me, it looks like me, but it's not, and all that. We tried to wriggle our way out of things. But we are talking about two people that were in a relationship who profess, she still professes, I loved him, and da 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 The only conclusion that I come to this, this, this thing here is that you were jealous of his character and the way that he was loved and um, you, your take would have been, would be, no, I'll wrap him up, uh, I'll manipulate him, he does what I say at the end. So you have the laugh over the worried family members that are really, really worried for his safety over a long period of time. So you, you'll take what everybody else wants because of the danger signs that they see in you and it, you fulfill everything that they believe that there was a possibility that could happen to him at the hands of you. Yeah, there's history surrounding her as well. Um, but on this occasion, Uncle Yami says, um, it's a family very, very much in distress down there. So I tried to break it down as best as I could this morning, I'm afraid. But no, no, no remorse from me from this one. Uh, some of you are asking that she's a lady and yeah, but yeah, I mean, you, there's got to be other bits. No, there isn't. There's no other bits to go with this. There is not one bad um, thing that is said about Casey Anderson apart from that he got embroiled in a relationship that was toxic, but not really as toxic for him as a person because he's not naturally like that. He's been taken in in, in some kind of way where um, she uses a, a, a female prowess on a younger man. And basically, I say, jealous, jealous without no qualms whatsoever that he has all the love that probably she wished that she could have had throughout her life. And that's the best way that I can break it down. I've got to keep it respectful to the family. You lot have asked me to break it down in that best way, but no way, no way. I, I'd settle for 22 to 25 years because of the premeditation, because of the lies during such a serious moment that if you love someone as bad as your remorseful as what you're saying, no matter what conditions you've got, and we've all got bloody conditions from trauma the longer that we've lived, um, with the lives that we've lived, you're still in control during the moment that somebody's dying and calling him a rat and, get, and getting rid of him. And you still want to try and squirm your way out. Genuine remorse would have been, it was me, I'd done it, and I, I, I did it, I don't know what I was doing, about, but you still knew what you was doing. Because you tried to squirm out of it during a moment where a young boy is dying um, right in front of you, all right? That's the best that I can do for this one. For now, maybe we can talk about it more on a live later. But it's a very hurtful one, this for me. Um, sending love and respect um, to um, um, Casey Anderson's family down there.